Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Shake Sales. I'm your host, Maggie Bloom, the sales evangelist at Mailshake. And today we are talking with Gabrielle Blackwell, GB, and she's the sales development manager over at Culture Amp. And she also is the writer creator for a newsletter called The One on One. And that's how we're going to base this whole conversation today. So for managers listening out there, sales managers specifically, we're going to ha help you level up your one on one, get it better than it was yesterday for your reps so you can give you know, them a bit more guidance too. So Gabrielle, thank you so, so much for being on here today. Before we dive in, do you mind taking some time to introduce yourself? Yes. Well, thank you for having me here, Maggie. But yes, everyone, uh, my name is Gabrielle or GB, uh, sales development manager at Culture Amp. I've been doing the SDR manager job for uh, a very long time now, I think like five or six years. Um, and then as Maggie mentioned, I uh, have a weekly newsletter that goes out every Thursday uh, called The One-on-One, -on -One, and it is my labor of love. So <laughs> I definitely subscribe, tune in, tell a friend to tell a friend. Amazing. I love that too, labor of love. I, I feel like everyone's used to saying passion project or side project, but yeah, still labor in it, still something you love doing. Yeah. And be, yeah, before we were talking today, GB, like I was telling you, you know, I've been on one-on-ones with managers where I'm like, what am I doing here? Or can we change this to every other week instead of every single week? <laughs> because there's no point of me, me jumping on here and I'm not putting the blame on managers you know, they have a lot going on in their days too. And I've never been in that management position to to know of all of those nuances that happen. So that's exactly, you know, what we want to talk about today. And I want to start out the conversation of like, where do you feel like managers typically get one-on-ones wrong? Yes. So there's this one stat that I'm going to always bring up in every conversation regarding managers. And it's this, which is, uh, the average age of first time managers is 30 years old. The average age that a manager goes through their first management training is 42 years old. So when oh my God. The 12, it's a 12 year gap. So when I think about uh, hearing an experience like you have, like you've had, like I, I think I've mm -hmm. definitely had those experiences of going into one on ones and I'm like, what are we doing exactly? Are we just kind of catching up? Like what's happening? basically what are my expectations as a manager i've also asked myself that question of all right i'm going to go into a one-on-one -on -one and i don't really know exactly what i'm supposed to be doing i the only point of reference that i have is past um examples of one-on-ones -on -ones that i've been through as a rep and recognizing that not every single manager is going to show up with every single person the same way like if yeah. I'm not actually seeing the diversity of ways that you can have a successful one-on-one, -on -one, then I'm not, I as a manager, I'm probably not going to be in a position to deliver really great one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, I, I think there's there's a big breakdown probably because people just aren't aware of what a really great one-on-one -on -one should be. They are not being shared uh, or they're not being made aware of what the expectations are of a one-on-one -on -one and what it looks like and what you need to do to actually have a really great one-on-one. -on -one. And so what's up happening is like your example. And again, I, I've definitely had reps who've, who've done that. They're like, hey, actually, I don't want to do our one-on-one -on -one today. And I was like, I don't blame them. <laughs> so, yeah. like, you know, so I, was, I was like, I don't really know what they're, I just don't know what they can get from me. So mm -hmm. um, I, so I think that the breakdown really, it, it happens there first is mm -hmm. if we don't know what we're doing, if we don't know where we're going, then it makes a lot of sense why we're not getting what we're needing. So mm -hmm. there's definitely a lot more that I can share on like what I think contributes towards a really great one-on-one. -on -one. Um, uh, I don't want to go on a full-on tangent. <laughs> I think like, like, okay, like where do people go wrong? It's because they just don't know what it looks like to do it right. Yeah, not proper training. And I feel like that's a common theme in the sales world in general of like, we have we're in one of those professions where like you technically can't really go to school to become a sales person or I haven't met m very many people that go to school studying sales. Yeah. So it's like one of those things where I feel like we get depending on where you're working or how much time you take to invest in yourself in certain scenarios. It's like we have some of the least am amount of training that like is forced on us, I guess is a good way to put it. So I guess in your example, like where did as a manager, and you gave us that really, really great stat, like, how did you get better at one-on-ones or find direction or that direction that you should have in your career? 
Yeah, uh, a lot of failure. <laughs> I think it's probably the best the best way to say it. Um, I I there was definitely um, it's like with every really great story, right? Like you're living in the status quo world, and there's something that introduces just enough conflict where you're gonna have to change, and you go through this kind of story of transformation. So I I think I had reached this point of conflict um, where it, it's real. I think it's really easy to hide as a the and i'm gonna say i say this with love i think it's really easy to hide as a unskilled manager mm -hmm. when performance is really well because there's no forcing function to get better as a manager because look i have this performance right yeah what ends up happening is when you get into a positions where things are not going right that's really where your lack of skills are exposed the most and so like that happened to me where i was like okay this environment that i'm in the situation that i'm in is beyond what i'm capable like whatever got me here is not going to get me through this so mm -hmm. when i had that moment i really started to go and seek out like direction and so i um like i followed kevin dorsey i signed up for his patreon i gobbled up all his content um i you know like i would i think he had something it wasn't a restream but it was something like that where mm -hmm. you can like back and see all the things on demand and like <laughs> yeah yeah i would like take screenshots and i would take notes and i just really tried my best to better understand like what are all the different inputs that inform how i show like how i can be successful as a manager and it was it's not just looking at your dashboards but it's really being able to as as uh, katie would say like diagnose issues so and then know that like know exactly if i see this here's what's going on here are the three things that i can do beyond that so as I was learning, like, what are the things that are influencing my rope's performance? Let me document that down into the point that I'm kind of creating a playbook for myself. So I think that's wow. the first part is you really have to take a critical eye from a data lens within your within your business. Um, mm -hmm. If you don't know how to do that, go seek out mentorship. So like, luckily, I was on a team of like eight or nine managers. One of them was an absolute data wizard. And so, you know, she, I was like, she, so she mentored me on here's how I look at the performance of my team and here's how I identify the outliers and here's exactly how I dig in a little bit further and here's what this means for the calls that I listen to, the emails that I look out for, what I ask of my reps as well. So I think you have to have that data practice first um, because if you don't, then you're never really going to know exactly where where to start and where to end and how you know your rep is getting better. So mm -hmm. like if that was the one big piece. I think a second part of this is also like getting really good at providing feedback the hardest mm -hmm. part that I found in providing feedback wasn't the saying the feedback like, hey, Maggie, here's what I'm seeing. It was getting over this like this like mental block that I had of I don't want to be an asshole and like traumatize yeah. someone. So I think I'd mm -hmm. only see examples of, hey, you're doing a great job or you're a complete failure. Like there was nothing in between. So mm -hmm. how do you get good at understanding like one, the importance of giving feedback, how it's interlinked with like you driving a higher standard and providing feedback to your people is also caring for your people so you're not being an asshole you'd be yeah. asked withheld that but <laughs> I, had to, I had to like i had to do that mental work and break down some beliefs that i had around that and then get really really good at um and this is again all informed by the data of going hey here's what i'm seeing in the data here's a couple examples Mm. that validate what I'm seeing like I want to ask you what are you seeing and then from he and then hey like here's what really great would look like and let's create a plan together to mm. get there so if I'm not actively kind of coming up and sharing that with someone um you know then I'm I'm not I'm not doing what I need to do with them right yeah. so like that's how I would hold there's 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 definitely nuances to this of like making sure that your reps are actually people who want to hear that, who want mm -hmm. to receive that and who are willing to act on the feedback. But um, I think if you're, I, I think like that, like that is the biggest piece is like the data getting really good and really comfortable at providing specific, actionable and timely feedback. Yeah. And you got so meticulous about it. Like you said, you were going through Katie's courses and I think sometimes whoever is listening out there when you're trying to learn something, I try to like look at seven different creators and I'm like, okay, great. I'm just going to get so fogged up with information that I just need to follow one person who's maybe been in this position before, who I like their style, you know, everything like that. So 
I just love how you kind of went deep on that information. And then, you know, like you said, you had those mentors around you where you were working and someone who was really good at data. And I think when you actually said it out loud, data and feedback, it's like it can be a hundred times easier to give feedback when you actually have the data to back it up instead of a manager who sits there and says like, I don't think you should use the word like, which I know is, <laughs> you know, a problem that some of us reps have, but it's like, okay, well, I think Gong came out with data or a certain company came out with data that it's actually not ruining your deal. So it's, it's like those certain things that if you have the data to back it up, you're coming to that conversation with better feedback than just, hey, I wouldn't have done it that way. Yeah, it's, um, so thinking about the book Radical Candor, uh, mm -hmm. so Kim Scott, she worked for Sheryl Sandberg um, at face Facebook, I think, uh, and um there's this story that Kim, like, yeah, so she, she provides or shares in the book, which is she gives a presentation. And then after the presentation, she's walked with Cheryl uh, and Cheryl's kind of like, oh, you know, trying to give her, you know, like hints that there was opportunities for her to do better. And Kim wasn't getting it. And so Cheryl just goes, you uh, are, you are sharing so many amazing and smart things. And the frequency that um shows up starts to decrease mm -hmm. your credibility. So I think it's all about how you deliver the feedback and like what is the actual impact. So depending on the person, if they're saying like so many times that it becomes like I'm listening to it and I'm going, because I say like, I say, um, I have a lot of filler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Me too. It, yeah. So that's the first part. Do I think, so I think within reason. So if I, if Maggie, you're, you have an opener to a cold call and you're saying um so many times. And then the call doesn't go the way that you want it to. And then I see that that shows up three or four times. I'm not going to say, hey, Maggie, like, stop saying, um, I just, mm -hmm. I might go more so, hey, Maggie, what I'm starting to notice is that the calls seem to be going out, of, like, they're going in a direction I don't think that you want them to go. I'm also noticing that at the beginning of your opener, uh, it seems like you're not really sure exactly what to say. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and you've got and your filler words are the ones that maybe make me like lead me to this conclusion. It mm -hmm. seems like you have an opportunity to take a lot more control and probably what would happen. Like maybe this is uh, uh, something around feeling confident in what you're saying. Mm -hmm. How do you like what do you think? Wow. You know, so mm -hmm. it, it's not so much like just stop it. It's just more so I think providing context behind the feedback. So it's not just me saying something just to say something. It's more like, I, I just wonder, I have this theory, I don't know for sure, but what do you think? And would you be open to testing some things out and seeing if and how it impacts your business? Wow. Right, so that's a, <laughs> yeah. that's a, that's a good example that I had <laughs> last week, right? Which was, I, I'm seeing th these calls are going way left mm -hmm. and it seems like you're giving up really easy. And it doesn't seem like you feel super comfortable. And if you don't feel comfortable, your prospect's not going to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. So here's maybe some things that we can do is your opener should be automatic. Yeah. You still have ums and likes, but I just want your opener to be chef's kiss. Yeah. Yeah. The confidence of that opener and, you know, going into that conversation, knowing exactly what you want to say, because yeah, that un unsure vibe isn't going to be the best if, if someone's answering that way. But yeah, and I love that. It's it's going a layer deeper than just, okay, let me give this surface level feedback. Um, but you're kind of giving it back to them. You're coming with a hypothesis to it. Um, and you're thinking about the whole big picture, not just this one little part of, uh, you know, a cold call or a discovery call or something like that. So we talked about data, having really good data. And looking at it, obviously, not just having it, but actually using it and then, you know, getting better and, and feeling better about giving that feedback. It's kind of like the overlying way of getting better at one-on-ones. What's like, could you give us a breakdown of like what a typical successful one-on-one -on -one should look like? So, yes, I, so I'll share this with you. And then a lot of this is influenced by Kevin Dorsey as well. Like everything that mm -hmm. I learned from him and he's a mentor of mine too, which is amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. So I do two one-on-ones per week with my with each rep on my team, 30 minutes uh, for each one-on-one. -on -one. So the first one-on-one -on -one is where we're reviewing numbers. Uh, so it's more about like, how are you pacing for whatever cycle of 
time is. Um, so like, how are you pacing for the quarter? Uh, what are the things that are most impacting your pacing? So what's going, what's working really well for you and what's maybe holding your business back? So once we have that, the next step is then to go through and look at now we've got this big quarterly number and there's certain goals that you need to hit to get there. Let's break it down into bite-sized chunks. What do you absolutely need to do this week? And then the third part of it is then, all right, now walk me through how you're going to accomplish your goals, mm. right? So we'll go through that. And again, we we kind of identified a couple of things of what's working really well for you and then what's holding your business back. So when we're looking at your goals, it might be something like, okay, where do you need to double down on to hit your goals? Wonderful. And then also, what is something that we should be working on that will pay off, right? Mm -hmm. So like, there's something that's holding your business back. What's one thing we can work on during our second one-on-one -on -one of the week, which is all about coaching and skill development. So mm -hmm. um, I think so in, in, in terms of the first one-on-one, -on -one, success looks like Number one, you've enabled your reps on how to prepare for that information. And like, I have a formula spreadsheet thing. And so people just input numbers and it spits out the information, right? So mm -hmm. that should be straightforward enough to do. So the thing successful is everyone is prepped, ready to go, and they understand the expectations of what the one-on-one -on -one is. And so there's no like confusion. We're able to maximize the time that we're able to accomplish our agenda. So that's like the first part. Mm -hmm. I think the second part of it is also identifying what's, what's one thing that they can continue to drill down on. And then what's one thing that you want to focus in on for the coaching and skill development piece, mm -hmm. right? Of course, you want to do things like, you know, check in on your reps and ask them like, hey, is there anything top of mind for you? Those kinds of things. But like, that's how I really like to run those first one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. I also like to assign some homework, which is like, okay, we're going to focus in on this one skill. So for example, hey, uh, again, uh, if I'm starting to notice, hey, you're having conversations, but they're not converting over into next steps. Mm -hmm. So like that is the big blocker here. Um, mm -hmm. Please bring in, or I might ask, well, hey, like, what do you think is getting in the way? So that my person go, you know, I'm really struggling with my opener. I'm really struggling with this, whatever. Okay, I want you to bring in, I want you to send me three calls. Assuming you have call recording, bring me in three calls where that shows up where you had a conversation, it didn't close. I want you to come in with a point of view as to like what's going on here. Um, and then we'll review a couple and then we'll also role play, right? Mm -hmm. In that second one-on-one -on -one of the week, right? So I think that the success of the second one, again, is clear expectations. You're focusing on one thing. The rep is coming in prepared, right? To share what's going on. And we're able to accomplish some role play and tell both myself and the pro and my, and my rep feel really confident that like, hey, we've got a really good plan going into next week. So Amazing. that yeah. to me is like success. So it's, and again, it's not just the manager here. So like the mm -hmm. rep has to prepare. It's a two-way street. The rep has yeah. to be prepared as well. So the manager's role on this one is you need to, as a manager, need to make sure that you understand how to, how to look at this information. You need to be prepared because if you come into my one-on-one -on -one and you're not prepared, that's on you. And then... Yeah. I think my favorite thing about your whole process and something where, you know, we talked about, we probably both have had bad examples in the past of maybe walking into one-on-ones. I'm sure every single rep has. And like we said, there's no blame on either side, but that you actually create kind of like these miniature goals for them of like, hey, this is your quarterly goal. What are these things that we can do this week and break it down? Because I think that's sometimes the really hard part about being a salesperson is there's this huge number you're working towards and you're working remote now. You don't have your team sitting next to you. Like it can be so isolating. At least that has felt that way for me in the past where I'm like, is anyone keeping track of what I'm doing? Like if, if I have a bad week, are people noticing? Like, is there a way that they would be able to help me? So I love how all of yours is, you know, really formed around that, which just shows, you know, your investment as a manager but also you're getting that buy-in from them as well. It's like, hey, we talked about your goals week over week. This is, you know, how we broke it down. And then you did the coaching in a totally separate call instead of just trying to cram everything together in about 30 minutes. I don't have the attention span for it. <laughs> I don't. I, yeah. well, it's also hard. I think it's, a, it's hard. It can be hard to digest the information if there's so many things. Like you talk about, like, there's a lot of conversations about, you know, the 
um, ineffectiveness of co of context switching. And so that can also be here that that applies to one on ones. So we're going from how are you doing to numbers review to what are your goals to like let's coach you to. Um, I personally, you you got my attention for about fifteen minutes before <laughs> before my like my brain just goes somewhere else. So one <laughs> point find ways of like just making it very specific so it's really easy to know exactly what's going on what next steps are yeah absolutely that's why i like to keep my podcasts around 20 25 minutes yeah. because i think we're all like that we're you know when we have calls with leads and things like that it's like we have so much focus attention and we're showing up 100 percent on those calls that you know sometimes when you're just meeting with your manager and it's a bit more casual everyone kind of loses attention during it. So with that being said, and kind of finishing up here, I, I'm generally curious about this, because I kind of feel like it's a hot take of, I hear some managers like do pipeline reviews, then they do one on ones, or they combine pipeline reviews and one on ones in the same meetings. Like, what are your thoughts around pipeline review meetings? Yeah, so take into consideration, my role when the, within the revenue organization for sales development so in terms of like pipeline reviews i'm not going to be in those very often mm -hmm. um i i have exposure from this small amount of time that i was in uh an ae position but however i can use i think like pipeline reviews yeah, it all depends on how I think you, it all depends on how you use them and what's the intention of them. So, mm -hmm. for example, as an SDR manager, there are certain things that I want to do within my one on ones. Um, but there's also things that other areas that I can look at in a team setting. And I think everything has to be driven towards what are your like kind of values that you think if your you and your team espouse these values and demonstrate these values and it's embedded into everything you do that is what's going to drive the kind of performance that you want to see so okay so for my side the things that i'm thinking about are all right like my like my there's the of course being data informed there's being one team minded and there's also um i think like i haven't figured out an easy way to say this other than the word like you know being authentic i just don't like that word <laughs> uh, but i think it's like really considering the wholeness of a person so okay that's like that's my trifecta of leadership so when i think about being one team minded uh uh it's like hey we're supporting each other we are not we're not competing against each other um mm -hmm. in the sense of cutthroat but it's more about all right if you and i maggie we're on the same team and i want to be the number one rep and you are the number one rep and I'm going to go, cool, I want to understand what Maggie is doing that's making her number one, right? So that I'm going to compete to get better. And then you're going to go, but wait a minute, I want to be number one. I want to know what GB is doing. So like what ends up happening is we both get better all the way. Yeah. It gets better too. So as a, as a manager, I want to create spaces where people can start to understand, cool, Maggie's the number one rep. What is it that Maggie is doing very specifically that other people can learn from and start to implement? So the one on ones that you and I would have, it would be, all right, Maggie, you've been able to be successful. Here are your strengths. You might walk me through your process as well. And I know because I'm having one on ones with other people. Well, they're not doing that. And actually, Maggie, I think that what you have to share is incredibly valuable for the rest of the team. So it might be within a pipeline review meeting, for example, hey, Maggie, I've that you are able to convert at this stage this much higher than ever than the team average walk us through what that like walk us through what you're doing exactly mm -hmm. so that's what i think about of all right there's these values that i want to i want the team to espouse i'm trying to figure out how do i bake that into how i run my team now there are people who value lambasting their people completely berating them and so they'll use pipeline reviews as a flogging experience right yeah so i think again so you have it all i think it all first starts off with like what are your values that what are the values that you want to espouse that will again drive the kind of performance that you want to drive how do you bake that into not just your one-on-ones but your team meetings as well and then um like so then from there it's like in your one-on-ones as a manager you're really starting to understand what are people's strengths you're also understanding what are their areas of development and so within your team meetings, you're giving the people the opportunities to shine in their strengths while giving everybody else the opportunity to learn what can they do. 
right? And then maybe there's sometimes that's like, hey, listen, we need to implement some kind of change. And I don't know that everyone's going to be bought into it, right? So I'm <laughs> like, like, you know, I'll use those team meetings to go, hey, here's this problem that needs to be solved. Mm-hmm. I already know how it might be, how it might go, but I want to ask questions like sales. Like I want to ask questions to get people to share out an answer Mm -hmm. that when I say, hey, here's what we're going to do, they're going to go, oh, I offered up that idea as a GUB, right? And they're bought into it, even if I, even if we knew exactly what was going to happen before all of that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's like, uh, that's how I, I realize I'm not answering your question directly. Like, hey, what do you think about five five reviews? (laughs) Again, it's, it's all based on what are the values? How does like your, um, how do your processes and your team meetings align to those values, right? And then how can you take the one-on-one time that you have with your reps to um, to maximize that time that you have in your team meetings, right? And again, all alignment with the values that you have. Yeah. And in your process, it comes full circle, which I love manager seeing managers do this with their reps of, okay, you took the top rep on your team, you're reviewing what they do, how they handle calls, you know, and and seeing, you know, as, as a whole org, like, or the whole sales, you know, department that you manage, like, where can Maggie come in and, and help the team? Because that's going to be full circle development for that rep of maybe one day wanting to become a manager and being able to, you know, explain their processes or be bought in in a certain way. And also it's, you know, they're not just sitting in that seat performing really well, but they're sharing that information with others so that in hopes maybe one day they want to be a leader um, and that comes a bit more naturally to them too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Amazing. Well, GP, thank you so, so much for coming on here. Super excited about your newsletter. Can't believe it's already gotten past 7,000 followers or followers. Yeah, no, it is. I was subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, almost, I'm almost, yeah, I, I got an email yesterday uh, I'm almost at 8,000. So it, I got like a thousand more subscribers in the past week. It was awesome. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. I love to see it. You're helping managers out there get better every single day. And like you said, learning from your own experiences, other leaders that you follow out there. But thank you so, so much for speaking to our crowd today. GP, where can people learn more about you and learn more about your newsletter? Yes. So I have a LinkedIn page, Gabrielle GB Blackwell, and they'll like under the tagline, you can sign up or subscribe to the one on one. So that's all you need to do is subscribe there. Um, I I started a, a, a Twitter, but I don't know what I'm doing on that. <laughs> Just subscribe to the newsletter. <laughs> We'll be there. We'll be there. You gave us one easy place to go. So everyone go follow Gabrielle on LinkedIn. You'll be able to find her newsletter there. But thank you so, so much for coming on here, GB. Thank you, Maggie. All right. Bye, everyone.